The question is that the motion be agreed to. Dr Megan Woods. Mr Speaker, and it's my pleasure to take a call. Labor is supporting this um, piece of legislation as we have at its various stages um, throughout this House and its passage into law. Mr Speaker, broadly the aim and policy objective of this bill is to encourage energy innovation. For, um, to um, allow the emerging energy technologies increase variation in energy-related business models. It also implements the government's EV um, programme, as the Minister has outlined. But, Mr Speaker, is this a piece of legislation that is allowing the kind of transformational change we need in order to meet our climate change obligations and do the transition to a um, low carbon or net zero carbon economy that New Zealand needs to be on a pathway to do. Mr Speaker, no it isn't. It is a very low ambition piece of legislation. It makes some changes that we support, because why wouldn't you? But does it go far enough and does it set out the kind of transform transformational change agenda that we need in this country as we um, are getting through the 21st century? Mr Speaker, the, the Minister has identified that process heat and transport are two very critical areas in which we must address our greenhouse gas emissions, that we simply must cut our CO2 emissions. So, Mr Speaker, while this bill does address one of those in terms of the, um, the, the EVs and makes some changes around that, Mr Speaker, there's been modelling done that shows that actually what will happen as a result of this legislation is pretty much what would have happened without it. That this is standing still legislation. It's not putting in place a kind of um, transformational change that will see the uptake of EVs happen faster because the government's getting in behind it, because it knows it simply has to in order to meet its climate change objectives and because this is actually what the 21st century is going to look like. One of the um, other important things that this legislation does is amend the Electricity Act to, um, 2010 and the Energy Fuels Levies and References Act of 1989 to allow the government, through ECA, to focus levy funding on the areas where the greatest impacts can be made. And the Minister said that it's um, in this area of transportation and um, industrial um, process heat that they see the greatest gains can be made. But, Mr Speaker, this is an awe for the this government, because in order to do this, some, some areas where we could make some really good gains in terms of our energy efficiency as a country, where we could address um, the, the amount of energy we used and the efficiency in which we used it, along with the great co-benefit of addressing energy poverty, is being cut to make way for this scheme. <coughs> So whereas ECA once was the champion and the agency through which we did some very fine work in terms of insulating our houses, that that's, that scheme is being cut and, this, and the focus is moving. And Mr Speaker, we have over 600,000 homes in this country that still are not adequately insulated. That's over half a million houses, well over half a million families and people that are living in houses that simply are not warm and dry enough. And we know what the impact of that can be. So, Mr Speaker, while I think that it is good that we can see that ECA turn its attention to industrial heat and to the issues of um, electric vehicles, we simply cannot lose sight of some of the other core objectives that it should be performing. And, Mr Speaker, that's why Labor has said that we will, in government, not only um, not stop the subsidies, but we won't deny homeowners access to, this government, to the subsidy as this current government has done, because we recognise there's a lot of hard-working New Zealanders that struggle to buy their first house, and it's not particularly well insulated, but simply they're not eligible. This government doesn't think that they are worthy of having any assistance from the government. And we think we can help both families and also address the issue of how it is that in a transition to a low carbon economy, we are going to have to make the transition from, fo from fossil to renewable energy. Because not only, Mr Speaker, do we need to increase the proportion 
of renewables that you, we use within our economy, but we also need to dramatically increase the capacity of our renewable generation as we make that transition. Because as we transition cars away from petrol and onto electricity, then we're simply going to need to consume more electricity. And if industrial, if the industrial processes, um, if electricity is one of the solution for transferring that industrial heat from a fossil to a renewable future, then we simply will need to increase the generation quite markedly. And that's something that the Vivid Economics report did some really good scenario planning around about what that future can look like. So, Mr Speaker, I'm a bit disappointed because I actually think this is really exciting change. This is such opportunity for New Zealand, this transition. If we do this properly, if we put this in place, this is actually an economic transformation on the scale of the Industrial Re Revolution that the world is looking at as we make these changes. But instead, what we have is a low-ambition government that just doesn't get it doesn't get what the opportunity is there and doesn't get what the future can hold and certainly is not coming up with the kind of fresh thinking and the fresh ideas that we need to take us further into the 21st century when we as a country have to grapple with these things. The most vexing thing in this legislation was how it was we were going to identify cars, electric vehicles in the bus lanes. That was the most vexing issue we could find in this legislation. Where are the big ideas? Where is the vision? And where is that thinking? Mr Speaker, the, the Select Committee did spend um, a, a reasonable amount of time um, trying to work out whether a coloured number plate or a sticker on the car was the best way to have the um, observation of whether or not a car belonged in the bus lane. Mr Speaker, that is an important issue and we need to be able to uh, police that issue, but it certainly is not the biggest issue when we think about modernising our, our energy sector to face the future. That should not be the biggest issue that we spend our time on. And Mr Speaker, um, w what we have seen is that we are saying that electric vehicles can go, well, that local authorities have the power to allow electric vehicles to to travel in high occupancy lanes. But Mr Speaker, this is not a long-term solution because as we see the uptake of EVs at the rate that I hope we see them, that simply allowing those vehicles to go into lanes that are meant to reduce congestion will only add to it, Mr Speaker. So again, we have a government that is just looking at band-aid solutions and not thinking about what the, the big picture um, uh, answers need to be to some of these problems. The other issue that this legislation does, and it is an important um, um, change that this legislation makes, is it amends the Electricity Industry Act of 2010 to clarify how the electricity industry legislation applies to a secondary network. And this is a really big growing business model in this sector. And Mr Speaker, one of the things that um, it sets out to do is to understand what it means when owners of secondary networks undertake activities equivalent to those of um, an established electricity distributor, and that they should be subject to the same regulatory requirements. Because, Mr Speaker, this is an area where top technology is changing all the time. The way in which we distribute electricity and the way in which that's done is constantly on the move. And it is an area where we have to have legislation that can keep up with that technological change. The days of um, just transmitting power down the power lines and it arriving at a house or a business and it being utilised, that, Mr Speaker, that is changing at such speed. So it is really important that we ensure, A, that we've got the right regulations, and B, that we have a legislative framework that it can meet those requirements as the change occurs. So, Mr Speaker, Labour is supporting this bill. We don't think that it is ambitious enough. It doesn't have the fresh kind of thinking that we need in this very important area for our economy as we um, enter in further into the 21st century. There is so much opportunity for New Zealand, Mr Speaker. We have a real strategic um, advantage in this new world. In the amount of renewable energy we have access to at a low cost. And this is a government that cannot imagine a future where that opportunity is maximised. I call Melissa Lee.
Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I hope Dr. Wood